Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks teaches English at Madison High School. And like many other teachers, started a brand new semester last Monday. And like many other teachers, I attended a fa faculty meeting Monday afternoon. Here, our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, gave me my semi-annual pat on the back. Then I picked myself up and walked back across the room. <laughs> and he instituted his new crackdown plan. More discipline, less horseplay, everybody toe the line, run the school in an orderly manner. After this mirth-provoking monologue, he chewed up a little furniture and stalked out. <laughs> well, maybe it was the faculty meeting, or then again, maybe it was the watercress and cucumber sandwich I had before retiring. <laughs> At any rate, I remember lying in bed Monday night and dozing off, when suddenly I seemed to be awakened by a loud pounding at my door. What is it? Uh, who's there? It is I, Osgood Conklin, your beloved principal. I'm coming in. Mr. Conklin, is anything wrong? Wrong? There's plenty wrong. We've got to crack down. More discipline. Less horseplay. Everybody toe the line. Run the school in an orderly manner. But, Mr. Conklin, is this your idea of less horseplay? I was fast asleep. Oh, then I hope I'm not disturbing you. Oh. <laughs> I'll go right on sleeping. Good. Miss Brooks, I've got to talk to you. Well, pull up a cucumber sandwich and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Conklin, you're biting the arm of my chair. Uh, yes, so I am. Sorry, but you know how I get when I'm upset. Now then, Miss Brooks, we've got to have more discipline. Got to have discipline. Got to have discipline. Got to have discipline. You hear me, Miss Brooks? I just heard four of you. <laughs> you're right. There are four of me. More discipline, Conklin. Less horseplay, Conklin. Toe the line, Conklin. And run the school in an orderly manner, Conklin. I wish I could add just one more. Which one? Rest in peace, Conklin. <laughs> uh, enough of these pleasantries, Miss Brooks. As you know, our profession teaches us that we must learn by doing. So, here we go. Everybody up, 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 up. Rise and shine. Leave the sack. Leave the sack? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, are you telling me to get up now? Miss Brooks, do I have to dump your bed? No, sir, I'm getting up. That's yeah. better. Now then, setting up exercises. Hands on shoulders. Place. Now touch the floor. One, two... Sound off. Three, four... Open the door. Five, six... Why don't I pick up some sticks and beat him over the head with them? <laughs> ah, you're nervous, Miss Brooks. Overwrought. You should get more rest. Oh, now we're on the same side. I'll get, get back in bed, and you just fade into the woodwork. <laughs> uh, not, not so fast, young woman. First, we must practice our daily hair treatment. Hands on head, please. Now then, rub. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How is One. that, Mr. Conklin? Am I doing it right? Oh, it feels great, Miss Brooks. I should have eight new hairs by Monday. <laughs> Keep it up. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Time to get up, Connie. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Connie, One. why are you massaging that pillow? It's got to have eight new hairs by morning. <laughs> Connie, Connie, wake up. Huh? Oh, oh, has he gone? Has who gone? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, just forget about it, Mrs. Davis. It isn't important. On the contrary, I think it's intriguing. Has who gone? Please, Mrs. Davis, it was just one of my nightmares. Oh, was it a bad one, dear? It was in Technicolor and starred Osgood Conklin. <laughs> I spent half the night rehearsing how to get up in the morning. That's what I, why I was so nervous when you woke me. Oh, I know how dreams can affect you, dear, but you must put them out of your mind when you wake up. Why, I had some bad dreams last night myself. You did? Yes, I was in a jungle somewhere, surrounded by lions and tigers. But if my cat Minerva walked in now, I wouldn't jump up on the chandelier. I mean, you must have better control of your nerves than I have. Meow! Ow! <laughs> See if we need any new bulbs up there, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> Where in the world did you come from? 
Oh, I haven't told her about that yet, Connie. She's only a kitten. <laughs> Well, you'd better have a little talk with her She's been running around with a pretty old crowd (laughs) Please, Connie, don't talk that way in front of her Minerva's very high-strung Yes, I know Lately, that cat's been as jumpy as a person (laughs) Now, let's forget about (laughs) We'll forget about nerves and bad dreams And hurry in for a nice breakfast I've got a brand new secret recipe for you. A secret recipe, Mrs. Davis? Yes. If I tell you how I'm making your egg this morning, will you keep it under your hat? Well, it may get my hair do a little icky, but I'll try. <laughs> I'm making you a delicious watercress and cucumber omelet. Oh, no. That's what started my nightmare. Besides, I haven't time to eat breakfast now, Mrs. Davis. Walter Denton's picking me up any minute. How come Walter's calling for you today? Your car isn't in the repair shop again, is it? No, but I decided not to drive for a while after picking up a couple of hitchhikers last Saturday. But, Connie, why should that discourage you from driving? I picked him up on my bumper. (laughs) Would you lean over toward my side of the car a little more, please, Miss Brooks? Why, Walter Denton, what have you in mind? Oh, it's nothing personal. I just want to get a good look at you in my rear view mirror. Yup, it's just as I thought. You look harassed. Harassed and bedeviled. Yeah, but lovely. Well, thank you, Walter. (laughs) Sort of. Especially your eyes. Even though there are a few temporary crow's feet caused by worry in the corners. They're just huddling together for warmth. (laughs) But, Walter... uh... To what do I owe these backhanded gallantries? Yeah, I was afraid you might take exception to my frankness, but I mean it all for your own good, Miss Brooks. If I have been less voluble concerning your obvious charms in the past, know, too, that I have been less voluble about the human frailties which you, like all mankind, have sometimes fallen heir to. Except, then, my plea for leniency. (laughs) I'll grant you a full pardon if you'll tell me what you're talking about. (laughs) Of course. Sometimes I get carried away by my own words. You just used enough of them to carry away Sidney (laughs) Greenstreet. Just what are you trying to wheedle out of me, Walter? Well, now that you mention it, there is something you can do to help both of us out. I thought so. What is it? Oh, it's like this. Since this is a new term, you, like several of the other teachers, will be assigned to the stockroom during your free period to take inventory and give out supplies. I see. And what does my good friend Raffles have in mind? We split a carload of pencils and retire? (laughs) Oh, oh, no, Miss Brooks. My motives are purely altruistic. I merely want to assist an already overburdened teacher whose heart and spirit are big and willing, but whose mind and body may not long stand the strain put upon it by the forthcoming scholastic hassle. (laughs) Walter, if Olivia de Havilland gets the Academy Award, you was robbed. (laughs) Now come clean. What's your cut in the projected Madison High School stockroom swindle? Cut? Oh, Miss Brooks, I'm surprised at you Surprised and chagrined Oh, when I think of your sense of integrity Your honesty Please, Walter, if you polish this apple anymore It'll be too slippery to pick up (laughs) Now come to the point, Walter Well, whoever helps out in the stockroom Gets first choice of the textbooks, right? Right And you want to help me So you can get yourself the brand new books Nice and clean, right? Wrong I want the old ones with the answers already penciled in (laughs) Ah. Now, why did I let that slip out? Oh, but you can see it my way, can't you? Sometimes in the impenetrable forest of education The path is easier seen If someone has cleared the underbrush (laughs) Yes, but you're asking for a free ride on the bulldozer (laughs) Don't you think it would be be better If you relied on your own work, Walter? After all, with an old book, you could be copying somebody else's mistakes. Anybody's mistakes are better than mine. (laughs) Well, if you put it that way, Walter. Gee, thanks, Miss Brooks. Well, here we are. Thanks for the lift, Walter. I'll run along in now. Oops. Ooh. Gosh, Miss Brooks, didn't you see that mud puddle? Of course I did. I just thought it might be fun to go wading. (laughs) Can I help you scrape off the mud? Well, I haven't time now. 
If I can just sneak by Mr. Conklin's office, I'll clean up when I get to my room. But suppose you can't sneak by his office. That, Walter, I refuse to contemplate. Believe me, if Mr. Conklin sees me tripping through the hall on these two lumps of mud, my name will be Shoes. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care, doctors prove you too may win a lovelier complexion with palm olive soap. But to win this lovelier complexion, you must stop improper cleansing. Instead, use palm olive the way doctors advise. 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, advised using palm olive soap this way for 1,285 women with all types of skin. Young, old, dry, oily, normal. And using palm olive soap alone, nothing but palm olive. Two out of three won lovelier complexions. Oily skin looked less oily. Dull, drab skin wonderfully brighter. Coarse-looking skin appeared finer. Even tiny blemishes, incipient blackheads disappeared or improved. Now here's what the doctors advised. Wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day. Massage with Palm Olive's wonderful beauty lather for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. Look for improvement in your complexion within 14 days. For doctors prove this way, using Palm Olive alone really works. So forget all other beauty care. Get Palm Olive soap and start today to win a lovelier complexion. For loveliness all over, use big thrifty bath size Palm Olive in your tub or shower. <laughs> And now, while our Miss Brooks is quietly sloshing down the corridor in her muddy pumps, let's look in on Mr. Conklin, Madison's beloved principal, and adjust our wavelength to his stream of consciousness. So we come to the start of another school day. A nice muggy one at that, as if I needed bad weather to make me irritable. The teachers in this school have simply got... Now, who's that cracking her dirty shoes through our hallowed halls? <laughs> Think she's going to sneak past my office, does she? Well, we'll just wait till she's even with the door. And then... Call who goes there! It's you, Mr. Conklin. How are things in the principal's office? Fine, thank you. How are things in the Everglades? Just uh, take those shoes off and step in here for a moment, Miss Brooks. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir. Do you by any chance remember what I told the faculty at the meeting yesterday? Oh, certainly, Mr. Conklin. I've been going over it in my mind all night. Remember? Remember? <laughs> of course. I remember what was discussed at the meeting. The question is, do you? Oh, indeed I do, Mr. Conklin. Every word. We've got to have more horseplay and less discipline. <laughs> What's that? I mean, we've got to crack up. Crack down. <laughs> I won't have a repetition of last term's lack of discipline. There's only one way to run a school, and that's, that's in, in an, an orderly, orderly manner. manner. Exactly. Naturally, I need the cooperation of my staff. Hence, everybody's, everybody's got, got to, to toe the line. line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's no reason why things shouldn't go off like clockwork. One, two... Sound off! Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. It's just that I spent a rather restless night. In fact, we both did. Uh, is, I'm still a bit upset. Well, there's nothing like concentrating on one's work to settle one's nerves. When is your first free period? Right after lunch. I figured I'd get a good rest then. I and... think not, Miss Brooks. I've penciled you in for the stock room at that time. Oh. Well, they have a lot of erasers in there. Maybe we could rub me out. <laughs> uh... No, I guess not. <laughs> we are extremely short of supplies, Miss Brooks, so I want you to check every requisition very carefully before handing them out. And if for any reason you have to leave the stock room, you know what to do? Raise my hand. <laughs> You locked the, the door. Is that clear? Yes, Mr. Conklin, I locked the door. Well, I'll be running along now. Uh, one moment, Miss Brooks. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh. Oh, yes. Rub, two, three, four. Rub, Miss two... Miss Brooks! Get your fingers out of my head! <laughs> Oh, 
I thought lunch period would never get here, Mr. Boynton. Oh, me either. I'm starved. Yeah, I'll just put our tray down and sit opposite you. There. Now, it's funny how we happened to bump into each other at the entrance of the cafeteria. Quite a coincidence. Yes, it was. Of course, I had to run a little. <laughs> but I think it's nice to have someone take you to lunch, don't you? Yes, I do, Miss Brooks. It was grand of you to ask me. <laughs> Would you mind passing my soup over, please? Here you are, Mr. Boynton. Nothing like a good hot plate of soup to warm you up. I said that laboratory of mine's like an igloo. Even my hands are freezing. Let's feel them. Say, hey, they are cold. Yours are nice and warm. How'd they get that way? I had them in your soup. <laughs> you know, it's a shame we don't have a better heating system in this school, especially in the biology lab with all those little mice and rabbits and students. You're right, Miss Brooks. <laughs> I was talking to Mr. Jensen, the janitor, about it, and he's promised to speak to Mr. Conklin and get him to inspect the system himself. You see, I have a lot of electrical appliances in the lab now, but none of them give off much heat. I've got to have another outlet if I'm to attach any oh, excuse other... excuse me, Mr. Boynton. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Walter. Well, we'd better be getting down to the stockroom. I don't want you to get nervous when the requisitions start pouring in. Or the books with the answers in them start pouring out, hmm? <laughs> well, all right, Walter. We might as well get going. Will you excuse me, Mr. Boynton? Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. And even though you asked me to lunch, I don't want you to worry about the check. Oh, well, that's very nice of you. I'll I... pay my own, Miss Brooks. You just take care of yours. <laughs> well, the worst part of the supply rush is over, Miss Brooks. And now we can sort of take inventory of the surplus stuff that we can use. That is, you can use for your class. Like what, Walter? Oh, paper, pencils, staplers. They bring 40 to 50 cents on the outside. And I really need one for my schoolwork, and... And then there are ink wells, uh, paper clips. Uh, this stockroom is only two doors from your room, Miss Brooks. Why don't I get an armful of stuff and stash it away under your desk right now? Walter, I am an English teacher, not a fence. <laughs> There's no such thing as surplus in the school system. Everything has to be requisitioned. And... Wait a minute, what's this? That? Oh, that's an electric heater, Miss Brooks. An electric heater, hmm? hmm? Why, that's just what Mr. Boynton needs for his lab. I know what. I'll hook it up right now and surprise him. But what about a requisition? Walter, can I trust you? Oh, you know you can, Miss Brooks. Of course, and I do. So if you'll keep quiet about this heater, I'll get you a requisition for a brand new stapler. Gee, that's swell of you, Miss Brooks. Now I can take this one out of the lining of my jacket. <laughs> Well, Harriet, where's the heater I sent you for? It wasn't there, Daddy. I looked all over the stockroom, but there wasn't a trace of it. Did you ask Miss Brooks about it? Miss Brooks wasn't there. Nobody was there. And the door was open. No wonder my heater's missing. I distinctly told her... To... Now what? Come in! Excuse me, Mr. Conklin, but I've got to talk to you right away. Oh, hello, Mr. Denson. Hello, Harriet. I better be going now, Daddy. I've got a class in a few minutes. All right, Harriet. Now, what is it, Jensen? I'm rather busy right now. Oh, this is important, sir. As custodian of the building, I feel it's my duty. You feel what is your duty? To tell you, sir. To tell me what? Please, Mr. Conklin, don't shout. That's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons for what? For your high blood pressure. <laughs> now, when I was your age... Never I... mind that now. What do you want to see me about? <laughs> Biological laboratory. The furnace vent isn't large enough to heat that big room... It's so cold in there, Mr. Boynton's had to put earmuffs on the rabbits. <laughs> We've got to build another outlet. Outlets cost money, Jensen. We'll requisition another heater. Meanwhile, I've got to find the when one you that When you've got to put my... earmuffs on rabbits, brother, you're in trouble. <laughs> Besides, if an electric heater is hooked onto the present wiring setup, it can cause a short. Well, tell me about it another time. And I've even worse the... than a short, Mr. Conklin, it might start a fire. I don't like to censure you, Mr. Jensen, but you are an alarmist. Yes, sir. Now I'm going down to that stock room and wait in back of it for Miss Brooks to return. I'll teach her to leave doors open. I'm glad we set up the heater in here before Mr. Boynton came back, Walter. Yeah, he'll sure be surprised, I bet. Uh, come on, Miss Brooks. Oh, there's the next class. I've got you in English this period. That's a coincidence, Walter. I've got you, too. <laughs> oh, Walter, here's the stock room, and the door is still ajar. Didn't you lock it when we left? No, I thought you did. Give me that key. There. 
Mr. Conklin would have a fit if he found this door open. All right, class, your next question is as follows. In The Mill on the Floss, George Eliot writes about a gentleman who is often compared with a gentleman in Silas Marner. Who is that gentleman? Are you talking about a fictional gentleman or George Eliot himself? Himself? <laughs> Walter, it happens that she wasn't exactly a gentleman. So what? He was a darn good writer. <laughs> Next question. Goodness, that heating system is really noisy. Hello? Hello? Why, it's the voice. It's coming out of the vent here. What? Quiet a minute. Let me listen. Hello? Sure. What time's the break set for? <laughs> Who are you? It sounds like Daddy. Daddy, can you hear us? Yes. Get me out of here. He must be stuck in the furnace. <laughs> Nonsense, Walter. He was going to inspect the heating system. He's probably just stuck in a pipe somewhere. Oh, in a, a pipe, pipe somewhere? somewhere? Oh, I'll go call the fire department. Harriet, you stay here and chat with your father. <laughs> Why, Mr. Boynton, what made you ring the gong for a fire drill? Well, I heard you calling the fire department, and I thought... Oh, that... but that's not for a fire. Mr. Conklin's stuck in a pipe somewhere, and I just called the department to get him out. Well, most of the kids are out in the street by now. I better go keep them in line. A little extra preparedness won't hurt any. Stuck in a pipe? Oh, I'd better get back to my own room now. Uh-oh, here come the firemen. Well, here we are. Where's the fire? Uh, right this way, Chief. Hey, come on, men. There isn't any fire, really. You see, it's just that somebody's caught in a pipe. Caught in a pipe? For this, I left a hand with a hundred aces and a double pinochle in it? <laughs> oh, please do something. My daddy's stuck somewhere. You've got to get him out. Well, where is he? Well, he was coming in over this vent here very clearly. <laughs> All right, let's get at this thing with our picks, man. Oh, my, Walter, Walter. Walter, there's enough confusion around here as it is. Okay. Go tell Mr. Boynton to send all the children home immediately. Okay, Miss Brooks. Keep going, man. We've got to get him out of that pipe. I wonder where most of them are. Oh, what's that? It seems to be coming from the stock room. Hey, it is in here. Well, let's see now. Did Miss Brooks give me back the key? Oh, yeah. Here it is. Walter Denton. Can I lay this crime at your door? No, sir. Two doors down. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. I got orders to go home with the others. Well, we'll find out about this. What's going on here, Miss Brooks? How could... Who did... When did he... What is... Mr. Conklin out of this pipe. He's... Mr. Conklin! <laughs> oh, Daddy, thank goodness you're safe. Hello, Harriet. Stop that banging! What do you mean, stop? The principal's got himself stuck and we got to get the knucklehead out. <laughs> <laughs> For your information, I'm the knucklehead who's stuck. I mean, I'm the principal of this school. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, how did you get out of the pipe? I was never in the pipe. But we heard you. You yelled, get me out of here. Yeah, what's the idea of yelling, get me out of here, if you're not stuck in here? I was locked in the stock room. Obviously, this heater vent connects with the vent in there, and as any idiot could figure out... Well, how does any idiot get himself locked in the stock room? <laughs> that will be all of that. I've had enough abuse from the fire department. Yes, we've had enough abuse from the fire department. Quiet, Miss Brooks. Now then, fireman, please remove your pickaxe from the school woodwork. Well, you needn't get so huffy. <laughs> After all, it only makes a little hole. Here, I'll take it out. <laughs> Just what we needed, a larger classroom. <laughs> Now then, Miss Brooks, I want some explanations, and I want them fast. Yes, sir. Who locked me in the storeroom? 
Where are all the students? Who called the fire department? Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. Don't you realize that these false alarms cost the city money? Now we've got to pack all our stuff up. What are all you firemen standing around for? Why don't you do something? Relax, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Conklin's out now. There's nothing left to do. Nothing left to do, but my lab is on fire. What? What? That's more like it. Come on, man! (laughs) Well, Miss Brooks, That leaves just you and me. (laughs) You and me and one more question. What's that, Mr. Conklin? (laughs) Did you happen to run across an electric heater in the stockroom? Yes, I did. And did you happen to connect it anywhere? Like Mr. Boynton's laboratory, for instance? Yes, I did. A funny thing about that. I was told by Mr. Jensen just this morning that another electrical appliance on that circuit would cause a fire. Now, you've got to be punished, Miss Brooks. (laughs) You hear me? You've got to be punished! (laughs) Where are you going, Miss Brooks? To take a cold shower. This is the longest nightmare I've ever had. Just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only luster cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster cream, not a soap, not a liquid but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, it wasn't much of a fire, and as soon as they put it out, one of the firemen got a hook and ladder, climbed up, and brought Mr. Conklin's blood pressure down. (laughs) When he was slightly more rational, he called me into his office again. Miss Brooks... Since Mr. Boynton failed to remind me about the electric hazard in the biology laboratory, I have decided that he is almost as guilty as you are. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, he Silence. didn't have it. <laughs> You, Miss Brooks, will stay after school and help Mr. Boynton clean up the debris those firemen left behind. I don't care if it keeps you both here all evening. Mr. Conklin, is that my punishment for starting the fire? Exactly. Got a match? <laughs> Miss Brooks Show, brought to you by Palmolive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Men, here is actual factual proof of more comfortable, actually smoother shaves by using Palmolive Lather Shaving Cream. 1,251 men tried the palm olive lather way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three out of four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try palm olive lather shaving cream. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the palm olive lather shaving cream way. Listen to our Miss Brooks next week over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 